everyone, welcome to a new What I Eat in a Day for Vegan November. And so for breakfast yesterday, I made a warm spiced oaty smoothie. For this, I just blended up half a cup of oats with one small banana, one and a half cups of almond milk, a teaspoon of maca powder, half a teaspoon of cinnamon, quarter of a teaspoon of ground ginger and a grating of nutmeg in my food processor until it was smooth. I then transferred it over to a small pan and heated it up gently on a low heat and then once it was warm I transferred it to a glass and then I topped it with a pinch of raw cacao powder. A really quick and easy breakfast and I know that a warm smoothie doesn't sound very appetizing at all, but it's honestly so nice. As I've mentioned before, I love warm banana and it's almost like a smoother porridge that you can drink. I'm not really doing it any justice, but I don't always fancy a cold smoothie during the winter months. So this is a simple smoothie breakfast, but just a warm version of it. If you don't fancy the warm version though, you can definitely drink this cold instead. For a mid-morning snack, I had some oat cakes with my three bean chili. For this, I just heated up a small amount of my three bean chili, which was left over in the fridge. And then I took three of my oat cakes. Once the chili was warm, I then topped the oat cakes with it, added on a sprinkle of nutritional yeast, and some chopped spring onions. I'll have the recipe below to my original oat cakes, though for these I had replaced the pumpkin seeds with onion flakes. I'd already made these, but if you'd like to see a recipe in a video, then let me know. They're so quick and easy to make, and I have them as snacks all the time with all kinds of spreads and dips and leftovers like this. It's a great way to use them up. For lunch, I made some fajita-loaded garlic wedges. I first preheated my oven to 180 degrees Celsius and then I took one large potato, I cut that up into wedges, I placed those on a lined baking tray, drizzled over one teaspoon of olive oil and then seasoned them with one teaspoon of garlic powder, salt and black pepper and I popped them in the oven for around 25 minutes. In that time I made some fajita vegetables by first slicing up one white onion, then two sweet red peppers and I chopped up two tomatoes. I first added the onions to the pan with a splash of hot water and I cooked those down until soft. I then minced in three cloves of garlic and added in two two tablespoons of tomato paste and fried that off. I then added in one teaspoon of paprika and one teaspoon of chili flakes and then I added in the red peppers and the tomatoes and I cooked that down for around 10 minutes before then adding in half a cup of water and I just left that to simmer. This makes two portions because I thought I might as well make one for the freezer too. I then removed the wedges from the oven and placed those in a dish. I then added on half of the fajita vegetables and then I took half a leftover avocado. I mashed that up in its shell and added that on top. I find that these make some such simple, affordable meals, be it lunch or dinner, and I love doing loaded fries or wedges. I also make them with my three bean chili on top, or baked beans, my nacho cheese sauce. You can totally get creative and come up with different combinations to go on the fries. And as I say, I froze the other half of the fajita mix, so you could have this in wraps with salsa, guacamole, and sour cream. You could even have it on nachos or just a baked potato. For an afternoon snack, I had a cacao brownie squirrel sisters bar. These come in a total of four different flavors. I've mentioned the raspberry ripple flavor before, but this one, as I say, was the cacao brownie, which tastes exactly like a gooey rich chocolate brownie but it's made with cashews, dates, currants, cacao powder, cacao nibs and cacao butter. I love vegan snack bars in general and these are great for an afternoon boost and they're perfect for on the go too. For dinner I made a cauliflower and broccoli cheese pasta bake. I first heated my oven to 180 degrees celsius and for this I took half a cauliflower and I cut that up into florets. I then placed those in a pan of boiling water with half a head of broccoli florets I had left over in the fridge and I cooked those covered for around five minutes so they still had a little bit of a crunch to them. I then drained those off and set them to the side and then I filled the pan up again with boiling water, added in some salt and then I added in one and a half cups of whole wheat penne pasta 
and I let that cook for around eight minutes. In that time, I took some of my pre-made cheese sauce, added that to a small pan. I'll have the recipe for this below, but I also added in half a teaspoon of turmeric and half a teaspoon of mustard powder. I just kept stirring that until it had warmed through. I then drained the pasta, added the sauce to the large pan and then added in one teaspoon of mustard and I grated in some nutmeg. I gave that a good mix, then added the cauliflower and broccoli back in, stirred that before then adding the pasta and mixing everything together really well. I then transferred that into a small baking dish and I placed it in the oven for around 15 minutes to bake. Once it was done, I removed it, served it up between two bowls, and then I topped it with some fresh shredded basil. I call it a pasta bake, but it doesn't really have that crispy top to it, so if you wanted to, you could add some breadcrumbs on before baking it. Again, if you keep batches of this cheese sauce in the fridge or freezer like I do, then this really does make for a quick and easy dinner too. You can double the quantities if you're wanting to feed more people. I think I've shared my fair share of pasta recipes recently. I do eat a lot of pasta. I love coming up with different ways to make it and making different pasta bakes is definitely one of my favorite ways to do it. For dessert, I made some chocolate hazelnut rice crispy squares. For this, I first melted two tablespoons of coconut oil in a small pan on a low heat. And then I added in four tablespoons of maple syrup three tablespoons of raw cacao powder, a tablespoon of hazelnut butter, a tablespoon of coconut sugar, and a teaspoon of vanilla extract. I gave that a mix together until it went really thick, and then in a mixing bowl, I added two cups of puffed brown rice. Then I took the chocolate sauce and poured that in over the top, gave that a really good mix together, and then I tipped it into a lined bread tin, pressed it down with my spatula and then I placed that in the freezer to set for 30 minutes. I then removed it, sliced it up into little squares and we had two each as a dessert. I bought these rice puffs ages ago with the intention of making this exact recipe but I've used them for so many things, they're really versatile. But these are great as a treat, kids will love them and they're great also for lunch boxes, for school and work as well as a dessert. And that is it for day 13 of Vegan November. As always, all of the recipes will be in the description box for you. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Bye.